The secrets to spontaneity captivated ancient China. Its greatest philosophers and thinkers from Lao Tzu to Confucius to Zhongzi to Mencius were all said to radiate an effortless charisma and a state they called Wu Wei. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to glide through life like those ancient Chinese sages? But for you and I, mere mortals, is it possible for us to Wu Wei too? Well, let's go back to the 4th century BC China to find out really what this whole Wu Wei thing is about. A crowd fills a public square. A ceremony is taking place. Center stage is Butcher Ding. He is set with the arduous task of dismembering a half-ton ox, a procedure that demands precise timing and perfectly smooth execution. This, however, is no problem for Ding. At every touch of his hand, every bending of his shoulder, every step of his feet, every thrust of his knee, swish swoosh, he guided his blade along with absolute precision. Just like that, the giant creature falls apart. The lord overseeing the ceremony is amazed. Wonderful! How can skill really reach such height? Butcher Ding bows to the lord and replies. Well, what I care about, your humble servant, is the Tao. See, when I first started cutting oxen, all I could see was the ox itself. But now, now I see it with my spirit and I don't use my eyes. My conscious awareness shuts down and my spirit takes me away and the job is done. Butcher Ding continues, holding up his cleaver. See this cleaver? A normal butcher changes his cleaver every month because he hacks. Whereas I, I've been using this cleaver for 19 years now. My secret? Well, between the joints of the oxen there is space and the edge of this blade has no thickness. So that which has no thickness passing through space meets no resistance. And this is why, after 19 years, this blade is just as sharp as it was when it first left the Webster. The Lord was indeed impressed. Marvelous. From the story, Butcher Dean, I have learned how to lead my life. Please excuse the bad acting, at least on my part, but that story is from Zhongzi, who's the second most famous Taoist philosopher after Lao Tzu. And that story shouldn't be taken as a literal guide of how to be a good butcher. Instead, the last line by the Lord suggests it should be taken instead as a metaphor. We think we take it for granted the blade should touch the muscle or the tendon or everything. But Butcher Din, actually he finds his way. His blade simply goes through through the space. The substance like a tendon, like a bone, this kind of thing is quite similar to the obstacles, the difficulties, the old unexpected surroundings, uh, happenings in our lives. So just like uh, the butcher Dean, who can avoid bones, uh, tendon, the ligament, a person of Wu Wei, non-action, uh, can also avoid the barriers difficulties, unexpected happenings. So Wu Wei in Chinese literally means non-action, but we can see from Butcher Ding's story a better definition would be spontaneous or effortless action. It's a state of being in which you know the principles of the social natural world so well that your mind can just relax. You let your subconscious, or what Butcher Ding calls his spirit, effortlessly get things done. Okay, so now we have a better idea of what those ancient sages were talking about. But the question still remains, can you or I possibly become spontaneous masters? Wu Wei, in fact, is not just wishful thinking. Our sages understood something intuitively that neuroscience has only recently been able to explain, that our intelligence is far greater than just rational thought. Neuroscientists distinguish between two forms of thinking or cognition, hot and cold. Hot cognition is fast, automatic, effortless and subconscious, roughly corresponding to what we think about as our bodies. Whereas cold cognition is slow, deliberate, effortful and conscious, roughly corresponding to the little voice that we hear in our heads. We all already know how powerful hot cognition is. We can reflect like a uh, riding bicycle. At the very beginning, you feel very, you feel very tense. You are afraid that the bicycle might uh, fall down. But when you, you are really achieved the ability of riding bicycle, you know, without thinking how to control, the bicycle just go very well. And this form of intelligence isn't just restricted to physical skills. Take the case of Albert Einstein, someone you normally wouldn't associate with subconscious intelligence. 
After 10 long years of incessant thinking on the problem of general relativity, he decided one evening to simply give up. He had had enough. It was beyond him. He went to bed early, depressed. Yet when he awoke, the solution that changed how he conceptualised the whole universe suddenly came to him. Only by giving up, releasing the tight grip of his cold rationality, could his hot subconscious make the unconventional connections necessary for his revolutionary insight. What's more, too much cold cognition, e.g. overthinking, can also be counterproductive. Actually, there are many things, many phenomena. You should do it in a natural way. For example, a plant. First, you think, oh, it grows the speed. I'm not satisfied with the speed. So you pull it up. You do some extra effort. So such uh, too much action, it will die. So just let it grow in a natural way. So we actually have something natural beauty. This natural being is more intelligent than your personal human thought. So just listen to that natural being. So it looks like the ancient sages were right. And we've said it many times on this channel before. In fact, I'm going to put this down. That we're so much greater than what the little voice in our head tells us that we are. We have this whole amazing, powerful subconscious intelligence that without the need for conscious interference can be highly effective. And yet our society and our philosophy is telling us that rationality rules that we should try and subdue the body. And yet we've seen in this video at the very least we need the body and the mind. Okay, so we've already taken the first steps on our Wu Wei journey. From Butcher Ding we've learned to find the gaps in life. From neuroscience we've learned why Wu Wei is possible. And from Einstein we've learned to just sometimes let go. Now all we need to do is integrate how the world works into our nervous system to let go of conscious control and then we'll become Wu Wei. But yeah, how on earth are we going to do that? And also, isn't using our consciousness to let go of our consciousness inherently paradoxical? Well, for those mysteries and how to see if we can truly become spontaneous masters, we're going to have to wait till next week. So this week was more of a story time episode, and that's because Taoism has all these hilarious and insightful stories. So I wanted to share one of them with you. If you enjoyed the episode and want to support the work that Master Gu and I are doing, then you can purchase the meditation course. It's only £8 and you get to learn Taoist meditation and help the work that we're doing. So this week's question is, have you experienced spontaneity before? For how long and what were you doing? Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.